Welcome to the Peptide Podcast. Today we're talking about a fascinating topic that's really been generating buzz in both the peptide and medical and wellness communities, microdosing GLP-1 agonists for overall health. In this episode, we'll explore how this emerging practice could impact metabolic health, weight management, and even longevity. So let's break down what we know and what it could mean for you. So what exactly are GLP-1 agonists? Before we get into the idea of microdosing, let's first understand what GLP-1 agonists are. GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide 1. It's a peptide hormone that plays a major role in regulating blood sugar levels and appetite. GLP-1 is found in many different areas of the body, including the intestines, pancreas, and central nervous system. It's also found in the hypothalamus. GLP-1 agonists, like semaglutide, are peptides that mimic the natural hormone. They're typically used in managing type 2 diabetes, more recently for weight loss. Now, these peptides work by enhancing insulin secretion when glucose levels are elevated, slowing down gastric emptying, and reducing appetite. They also help lower blood sugar blood pressure, and cholesterol levels. Most recently, they've actually been approved for improving cardiovascular health. So what exactly is microdosing? Microdosing in the context of GLP-1 agonists refers to taking very small subtherapeutic doses of the peptide, typically much lower than those used in the treatment of diabetes or obesity. Now, these smaller doses could potentially have a subtle impact on your metabolic health, on your appetite, and overall well-being without causing the more intense side effects that we seem to see at higher doses. So why microdose GLP-1 agonists? I want to highlight several potential benefits of microdosing GLP-1 agonists just for overall health in general, even for people who aren't dealing with obesity or type 2 diabetes. So GLP-1 agonists are known to help regulate blood sugar levels by enhancing our insulin sensitivity. Microdosing could help prevent insulin resistance, a condition that often leads to chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes. So even if you're not a diabetic, stabilizing those blood sugar levels can really help improve energy levels, reduce cravings, and even support support better metabolic health. Now, one of the most well-known effects of GLP-1 agonists at higher doses is weight loss. Microdosing might actually help with weight management by subtly decreasing appetite and promoting more stable blood sugar levels, which in turn could reduce those energy crashes and those sugar cravings that often lead to overeating. For some people, microdosing could provide a gentle nudge towards more balanced eating habits and may really help individuals manage emotional eating that's triggered by stress or even fluctuating hunger signals. Now, the positive effects on insulin sensitivity, on blood sugar, and body composition aren't just about feeling good in the moment. There is also potential long-term benefit of microdosing GLP-1 agonists, especially when it comes to longevity. Since insulin resistance and poor metabolic health are linked to aging, chronic disease, and even shorter life expectancy, using these peptides in low doses could theoretically help slow down some of these age-related processes. The next thing I want to talk about is chronic low-grade inflammation. Now, this low-grade inflammation that happens all the time is really a key contributor to many health issues from cardiovascular disease to autoimmune conditions. Now, some studies have suggested that GLP-1 agonists may have an anti-inflammatory effect, which could contribute to overall better health. Microdosing these GLP-1s may help reduce systemic inflammation without the significant side effects that come with higher doses. And when it comes to microdosing GLP-1 agonists, it's important to start slow and work with a healthcare professional to really tailor the dosing to your unique needs and goals, which is really a more individualized approach. But it's important to keep in mind that while microdosing GLP-1 agonists is generally safe, there can be side effects such as nausea or digestive discomfort, especially if the dose is not carefully monitored. That's why it's really important to start with a very low dose and gradually increase it under the guidance of a healthcare provider. So what does microdosing GLP-1s look like in practice? Now, the specific dosing will depend on the individual, but in general, a microdose of semaglutide would be much lower than the typical prescribed dose for managing diabetes or obesity. For example, the typical starting dose for weight loss with semaglutide is 0.25 milligrams per week, whereas a microdose might involve starting at a fraction of that amount. An example of microdosing 
would look like week one through four doing 0.025 milligrams to 0.05 milligrams once weekly. Now this is roughly one tenth to one fifth of the initial standard dose. Then you can follow it by doing 0.1 milligrams once a week and gradually increase if tolerated to higher doses, but still at a much smaller increment compared to the full therapeutic dose. The most important part of microdosing is closely monitoring how your body responds, adjusting the dose based on any side effects, and then ensuring that you're still supporting your health with good nutrition, exercise, and other lifestyle practices. So is microdosing right for you? As with any new health trend, it's important to remember that not every approach works for everyone. While the concept of microdosing GLP-1 agonists is promising, especially for those looking to improve their metabolic health, it should be approached with care and ideally under the supervision of a healthcare professional. If you're interested in experimenting with microdosing GLP-1 agonists, speak with your healthcare provider to see if it really could be a beneficial strategy for your health goals. And as always, remember, the best way essentially to manage your health is through a holistic approach. That includes proper nutrition, regular exercise, stress management, and sleep. Thanks again for listening to the Peptide Podcast. If you found this episode helpful, please be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And as always, have a happy, healthy week.